This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a follow-up question sent in relating to the Unify video on Ask ZBrush. And the question is, why would I ever use Unify on my models inside of ZBrush? So as we explained in the other video, Unify will center your model and also change the size to a maximum XYZ size of 2. So this is going to take the largest dimension here and set it to 2 on your model. So right now this is a cube, so you can see here the X, Y, and Z sizes are all 2. So this is the unified version of this cube, which is the size that ZBrush prefers. Now this size here, when it's in the optimal size for ZBrush, is going to affect how your draw sizes work, how your intensity behaves, and also items like the DynaMesh resolution, and even down to the functionality of the ZModeler brush. So if you have a model that is unified, these functions are going to work better than if you have a model that's too small or a model that's too large. So if I come up to the top here, I have three different versions of this model. I have the unified version, I have one that is very small, and one that is very large. So starting out with the unified version, I just have the standard brush selected, I have my intensity set to 25, and my draw size is 64. Turn off polyframes here. So if I sculpt on this model, I'm going to get a nice result. Now, if I turn on another item, say like the floor grid, you're going to be able to see that entire floor grid in relation to my object here. And with this model being unified, the tools inside of ZBrush are going to perform nicely. Now if I switch to the small version of the model here, and just select that quick, you're going to first notice that in relation to the floor grid here, the model is really tiny. So if I frame this and just kind of zoom in on the cube here, you're going to notice that the scale of this is 0.1. So we went from XYZ size of 2, and now we're at 0.1. At this scale, you'll notice that the draw size of 64 is huge. So if I want to affect this model with the standard brush, and simply click, you're going to notice it's not going to give me what I want. So I could zoom in and then say shrink the draw size all the way down to 1, which is getting a little bit better. You could also hold shift and click on the dynamic brush option here, and now this will affect a little bit more. But now you're not going to be able to use that dynamic size option, which is really handy when you're drawing lines around objects to keep the consistent size of that shape. So as you can see with this tiny sized object, I'm losing features such as that dynamic brush mode. Now if I switch to the extremely large version here, you'll notice that this one is huge. And so here is that floor grid, so it's very large in the scene. With my draw size set to 43, you're going to notice I'm not going to be able to even see the effect of that sculpting on my model. So I'm going to have to increase this draw size even up to a thousand, and still I'm only getting a very tiny effect on screen here. So once again, I'd have to disable that dynamic draw size there, and now I could sculpt like so, but it's not going to let me use a lot of that functionality that I like with that dynamic being active. Now another thing to notice, that your DynaMesh resolutions are also going to change based on the scales of these objects. So if I go back to that small model and zoom all the way in here, and now I DynaMesh this, say to something that would normally be acceptable for a resolution like 512, and I click it, you're going to notice that I'm going to get this as my result. So since this model is so tiny, a DynaMesh resolution of 512 is not going to give me enough geometry to actually support that. So at this stage, if I went back to the unified version of this model, and now changed that DynaMesh resolution to 512 and turned it on, you're going to notice that this is going to give me a lot more resolution across that model, and I'm going to be able to sculpt as I would like. So now if I come through and sculpt on this, you're going to notice I'm going to have 1 million polygons on this mesh here, and now when I sculpt, I'm getting exactly what I want. So unifying will just help improve the functionality inside of ZBrush on your model. So if you do not have to worry about holding scales or sizes, and you're just sculpting, go ahead and start your model, block out its basic shapes and forms, and then come down to that deformation panel here and click Unify, and you're going to get better results on your sculpting and different features inside of ZBrush.
So if you have any other questions on ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing!